Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today at, um, for our webinar, The Journey Doesn't Stop Here, um, in association with Equinox IT and Scrum with Style. Um, my name is Carl Merriwater. I'm the Principal Consultant at Equinox, and I'm joined today by Ron Bunning. Um, just a few housekeeping um, uh, guidelines. Uh, please keep yourself muted. Um, Ron will be using uh, polls during the webinar. Um, those are available from Mentimeter. Um, if you go to menti.com in your browser and enter the code 29205733, that'll bring it up. Um, but there'll also be a QR code in the slides and there's a link in the Zoom chat. Um, we'll run Q&A at the end of the session. So look, please hold your questions until then, uh, but look, please feel free to enter your questions into the chat in the Zoom chat. Um, and we're recording this webinar and we'll make it available. Um, Equinox and IT, Equinox IT and Scrum Style. We've been working together to deliver Scrum Alliance training in New Zealand since 2009. Um, if you don't know about us at Equinox IT, um, we consider, consider ourselves New Zealand's most practical IT consultancy, established in 1995 with offices in Auckland, Wellington, and Southland. Um, we specialize in business transformation, cloud, DevOps, and agile and training. Um, Rowan, Rowan uh, Bunning is an Australian pioneer of Scrum, having been uh, become one of the Australia's first Scrum Masters in 2003, Australia's first Scrum, a certified Scrum practitioner in 2006, certified Scrum trainer in early 2008. Um, in 2019, Rowan became the first PATH to CSP educator in Australia um, to be accredited, and Rowan was, was also a lecturer in Agile Project Management at the University of uh, Sydney. Um, Rowan has also spoken at Scrum conferences in Australia, Europe, and North America since 2006. Um, today's webinar, The Journey Doesn't uh, Stop Here. Um, the focus of today's webinar is professional development pathways available in the Scrum, uh, from Scrum Alliance and the value that these deliver and why they matter. Um, but we think that's really important because as agile professionals, we should always be looking to op uh, for opportunities to learn and develop new skills. And definitely as leaders, um, we should really be demonstrating this from the front. Um, so look, with, further, with no further ado, I'll hand over to Rowan. Great, thanks a lot, Carl. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm coming to you from the bottom right-hand corner of the slides here. I'm just thinking that that's a bit like seeing New Zealand in the bottom right-hand corner of a lot of maps <laughs> down under. So planning professional development in Agile, uh, the agenda we have today is looking at some of the traps, some of the challenges and, and things to avoid in making choices about professional development in the Agile space, because I think there are some that aren't so obvious to people that come at it from other spaces, not the Agile space, uh, perhaps as a background. And I'd like to take you through some pathways. So what I'll frame as the gold standard uh, pathways that uh, we can, can offer. And there's a lot more to it than a lot of people realize, I think, these days. There's much more than just entry-level two-day certification courses for professional development in this space. The path to CSP, which is Certified Scrum Professional, uh, as Carl mentioned, I was the first of those in Australia many years ago, and I've, I've got a real passion for helping people with taking the journey, which is not just you know, an entry-level course, but really a pathway through to actually demonstrating aptitude in applying skills in the workplace and some of the more advanced courses are just uh, much much more in depth than a lot of uh, what people have encountered if they've just done an entry-level course and leadership path which is going beyond the scrum master role product owner etc to managers senior managers included what do they benefit from looking at and, and not just looking at but really leading the way with in this agile world if they're to be successful and the organization they lead is to be successful. Uh, I'll try to move fairly quickly through it, but I do want to start with a poll. And yeah, I believe we can uh, share a link in Zoom chat and there's three ways to access it. Thanks, Paul. You can see a link just in your Zoom chat uh, if you open that one up. And the question really is, what are your biggest challenges in respect to making agile related professional development choices? So just like to open up to all of you just to share some thoughts on that. It could be just a few words. What are the challenges you see? Just pick one, perhaps uh, 
that seems particularly prominent in making choices about investing in professional development these days? Let us know via Zoom chat if you have any trouble accessing that, but there also is that menti.com and you can type in a eight digit code, but perhaps that link in Zoom chat's even more convenient and there is a QR code as well. I'm just showing my screen on the, the responses as they pop up. Workplace is not understanding the true value of Agile. Yeah, I, I certainly in my coaching consulting work, see a lot of putting Agile in, in too small a box as really just some changes in process that teams do. And, and that's really missing a lot of the much more big picture things that organizations could benefit from. Yeah, lack of opportunity to apply my skills. Training costs, convincing the company to pay for training yeah, for staff. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so hopefully some of what we talk about today will help with conversations like that, that last one there, maybe the first one. And yeah, lack of opportunities to apply skills. Yeah, I, I do see, especially with the Scrum Master role, people being expected to act a bit more like an administrator, uh, almost a mini project manager, and, you know, really just focus on velocity and teams delivering and things rather than improving, rather than leading change, being a change agent, improving continuously the, the organization and really being a, a leader of learning. So yeah, maybe a few things there we can briefly touch on. Right. So just let's start with some learning and development traps, things that I've come across that seem like pitfalls. And the first one I think is just how this is so many options these days. The, the options have really ballooned since I started uh, with my, my uh, training, I guess there was really just one option. <laughs> there was one accreditation body, Scrum Alliance, and probably two accreditations that the Certified Scrum Master, Certified Scrum Product Owner. Uh, but since then, there's been loads and loads of other organizations that kind of like that model and, and have tried to, to take advantage perhaps, and, and not just come up with things that are quite unique and, and perhaps name differently, but even things that have got almost exactly the same name as Certified Scrum Master. In fact, Carl put uh, <laughs> these together and I'm, I'm scratching my head a little bit about some of them and, and where they come from and yeah, and, and how they managed to get away with having the name that's almost exactly the same as the most well-recognized one in the industry. So I think it's very confusing, right? And it's almost deliberately there's, there's some creation of, of brand confusion and, and some very similarly named accreditations from even organizations that sound very similar. So how do you make sense of all of that? That's, I guess, one of the first things. Uh, that's part of what I want to help you with today a little bit. Um, the first trap, though, I'd like to speak about is yeah, separating team members out and sending them on separate training courses from the start. Uh, I mean, that's another thing to uh, do that down the track when we're getting into sort of deeper, more specific skills in product ownership or the technical matters and things. But really what I've seen is if, if we take your existing org structure and existing narrow specializations, business analysis, you know, user experience design, architecture, coding, testing, et cetera, and just say, let's map that to some separate training offerings. What people come back is learning a whole lot of things, but not how to work together as a cross-functional team in a very collaborative way where we're starting to break down the barriers between those different silos and those different different uh, special specializations and start to think about people getting more involved in, in developing secondary, secondary and tertiary skills, which is really what aids uh, good agile teams um, much more perhaps. And what we want to start with is really let's look at, at changing into working well together as cross-functional teams. So I've had some experiences where agile coaches have said you now they went on this se separate sets of training uh, well recognized accreditation body credited them in, in agile testing and agile analysis and things like this but they didn't know how to work together it just fundamentally missed that uh, another big trap and i see this all the time really in 
a lot of the trainings I do with people who are closely involved with the value creation, Scrum Masters, product owners as well, team members of all sorts, uh, they say, this sounds great, love it, really inspired, really want to do this. And they say, well, the problem is when I go back to work, my boss isn't even aware of a lot of this. Uh, and has, even if they were aware, they would have not the skills, they wouldn't be equipped to actually lead this sort of change and, and support what we've been talking about on the training. So what's missing there is, is the lack of understanding, which might start with some sort of training for, for leaders. And that's, that's been a big missing piece in, in a lot of organizations when they've taken uh, this path into agile transformation and change. Uh, not that they don't start with the people who are meant to lead it. And there are some, some things we can offer that can really help with that these days. Uh, also believing that two days is sufficient. And I think this has become a, a little bit of a sort of a, a running joke with some parts of the Agile community that two day training can, can somehow make you masterful, right? When we say certified Scrum Master, that's the name of a role, but it doesn't mean that that initial training makes you a master of anything. Uh, really the certified Scrum Master and, and you, what can expect of most two day entry level uh, training courses is really just to clarify the understanding of the concepts and to have some starting points and be orientated with perhaps how to get started with a particular role, but not the depth of skill and the ability to figure out what do you apply when in, in a context back at work. So I think there's a lot more that we need for that. Knowledge without know why, know how, which is basically what I was just uh, suggesting is that we need to get beyond just the recall of some some specifics out of a scrum guide or you know, some information about a framework, we need to actually have people be able to enact that, be able to start to play a particular role in a context that's not pure scrum or agile of any sort at this point and, and know what to apply when and how to navigate applying the, the principles and the values to, to a specific context as well as which practices to choose. So we need to go beyond the, the sort of entry level that talks specifically to his knowledge of the framework, just test you on that knowledge recall and really go to application and some of the higher order uh, learning objectives, which is exactly what I'll talk to with the path to CSP, uh, which is a fantastic program that goes beyond the, the knowledge level into application and synthesis and, and a number of other levels. Okay, and the final one, uh, and this goes particularly to Scrum Masters <laughs> and particularly to hiring, because I have run into this with a, a client uh, recently, uh, where I think I've seen a lot of job advertisements in Australia and New Zealand that just call for a, a certified Scrum Master or a PSM1 accreditation. But alongside that, you see five years of relevant experience or three years of experience in these sorts of things. Now, if you're going to put certification on, uh, you know, as a uh, desirable thing, maybe not mandatory, but desirable thing on a job description, then I would suggest it should be commensurate with the sort of experience level you expect of the people you're trying to hire. So that second example there was, whilst the brackets might be a bit confusing, it does call for advanced certified scrum master or certified scrum professional. So something a little bit more high level than just a two day entry level course for, for a scrum master who's got a minimum of three years experience. Uh, so you know, someone who's actually investing in their professional development would, you tend to expect them to have done more than just a two-day course and that's it in, in that particular field. So yeah, I'd like to see, you know, more job descriptions that are actually calling for, for something beyond the, the absolute minimum, especially when they're looking for multiple years of experience. So what are, are some pathways? And let's uh, start first of all with a, a quick poll on this. Uh, I'd like to just understand, those of you attending live today, uh, what's the way of working most like out of these things? So if you just open up that Mentimeter poll again, and the question should be, which is your way of working most like? Scrum-like, so you've had time box iterations, some specific cadence of planning and review and retrospection, Kanban-like, so we might have absence of any specific time boxes, sort of a full 
triggered flow, not agile. Okay. One of the other options, I guess. Interesting. We do have, I'll just share my screen. Sorry, there we, there we go. Uh, quite a lot of Kanban like and, and not agile. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I guess this would differ depending on the groups where we have, but uh, yeah, for a lot of people I work with, it would tend to be something that has iterations to it and a regular cadence of interaction with stakeholders, which is a lot of the point of the interaction in, in Scrum is that that sprint review is a crucial one to inspect and adapt the direction of everything you're producing. Uh, and yeah, safe, I would, yeah, so wondering if we might have a bit of that here. Okay. Let's look at this. So we're going to, I'm going to talk most to this a scrum based way of working, I guess. So apologies to those of you that have chosen the Kanban path at this point. But um, yeah, this, the education programs that have been the first in the industry, I guess, from 2003, I think the Certified Scrum Master started, uh, was really from Scrum Alliance. And Scrum Alliance, I don't know if you're aware, is the, well, is a, not-for-profit organization and yeah all the the fees don't go back to shareholders they go to back to reinvesting in the community they really are and, and you can see this in the third point here and a lot of what I am for is to have people not just know things but be inspired be motivated intrinsically motivated to actually learn more and to really try some things out in their workplace and I think that's a lot of what training can do to, to create energy, create some sort of buzz and, and appetite for people to actually experiment and start the real application and the, the learning from doing um, back at work. And it's a lot of what the Scrum Alliance trainings have always been about, not just passing a test, uh, which is quite a different focus. And just a quick comparison, and I guess this is just taking Scrum Alliance and Scrum.org. Um, these would be the two most credible, I would say, uh, Scrum-based uh, professional development organizations. And there are some significant differences. I think one thing to be aware of is that Scrum Alliance goes beyond software development. There are whole training courses specifically about marketing, about hardware, things like this. A lot of them are more in North America and Europe, but on the, the trainings I do and a lot of other uh, trainers with Scrum Alliance, we do use examples that are not just software development. Uh, scrum.org is more focused on the software development industry and uh, yeah other frameworks you know scrum.org does actually have some nice crossover ones with kanban and, and user experience with scrum uh, but uh, scrum alliance does focus a bit more on the the agile coach angle and having some really very advanced accreditations for agile coaches that provides a, a really nice journey to, to to what you can work towards to be you know, a real guide level expert and uh, highly proficient in this, in this sort of, uh, area. Uh, there also is from Scrum Alliance, a lot of post-training support that a lot of people wouldn't know about. Some of the things on the right-hand side, you can see uh, some of what I and Equinox IT offer. So um, when I do private courses, we always offer a, a next steps workshop so that we can not just learn some knowledge and try it out in the training context, but actually talk about what are we going to do with that knowledge back at work, do a follow-up workshop with the people involved and perhaps some of the managers to action next steps. So that's where you get, I think, a lot more return for your in training investment is when it's enacted and not just something that's shelved away for, for a long time. Uh, Equinox IT have scrum circles and there's one coming up where we can share each other's you know, their stories and then learn off each other. What are your challenges? Pick each other's brains about what to do about them. And I'm wanting to be as involved as I can in those. Uh, we're going to be able to do this virtually now online. So it's a, a great opportunity for people to join from all over the place. And I do have an online forum where people can keep connected and ask questions anytime after training courses. They're also on the left-hand side, you can see some of the Scrum Alliance tools that are available to people that do uh, Scrum Alliance courses. And some of those are, yeah, really very specific. So skills development for Scrum Masters or personal improvement tool. There's ways to self-assess and, and look at some of where your strengths and weaknesses are and, and what you can do to enrich some of the areas that you want to develop in. 
And there's a comparative agility assessment, which is a broader one that you can use with your team and your organization to see where we at and how can we come back to that and, and see if we're progressing in the dimensions we want to improve on. So look at the bigger picture on this, because there's a lot of different accreditations that Scrum Alliance has, and I've put in a few that uh, professional development offerings outside of that as well here. Uh, but if we start to think about maybe starting with a thing like Scrum Foundations, if you are using Scrum, or there's one down the bottom left there called Agile Fundamentals for organizations that are trying to make a decision about Kanban method, Scrum, what framework, you know, how do we orientate to, to really start in the right way? And that's one I do public, uh, sorry, private versions of. Uh, but at the top there, manager path, leading cultural change, perhaps a little st structural change there along the way I'll explain. Uh, there's a certified agile leadership pathway that, that Scrum Alliance has, which really is, addresses that big problem space I spoke to earlier, which is the leaders aren't equipped to lead and, and they don't understand let alone have the skills and the personal change involved in, in a different style of leadership necessary for, for agile change. The Scrum Master Path, and this is laying out some of the, the path to CSP. This is the pathway from CSM to the advanced certified Scrum Master, and we'll unpack that in a minute, right through to some of the scaling it up and taking it to the broader organization with certified Scrum professional. And the product owner pathway, which has some other options that, that could be added in here as well, but uh, I find a lot of product owners need to orientate with the, the role and understand what that can be for them uh, and then go deeper into some techniques such as user stories, uh, some perhaps uh, ways to split them and, and, and work with them on backlogs. So let's have actually have a look at the path to CSP in a moment, but maybe a quick poll. I'm just curious about the level of investment in professional de development, whether you're a person making choices for others or deciding, you know, how much to put into it yourself because uh, I know we're all busy people and it's been quite a, a different scenario I guess uh, during the pandemic. What do you anticipate going forward if this year looks like we might come out the other end to some extent of the, the pandemic? Do you expect about the same level of investment uh, or more or less? Know some people have been taking a lot of advantage of the online offerings during this period right because there's access to a, a lot of them now and i found they're surprisingly effective if done well let's pop up the results there sorry uh, so about the same all right so you have a bit of a mix but it seems about the same on the whole all right so let's have a quick look at half the csp because i think this is where people that have done perhaps an entry level scrum accreditation can take the next steps and invest further in their professional development. And also for L and D managers or people who are agile transformation leads, perhaps looking at how this program can, can help take people through a journey. That's, it's not just a starting point, but a, a real progression. So yeah, you have these, these tracks and this is laid out in the Scrum Alliance website, but I've added in on the right-hand side, the elevated certifications too, that particularly people that are moving into agile coach role at some point, uh, you really aspire to with the certified team coach is what CTC stands for and certified enterprise coach. That's the second one down on the right. And yeah, we can think of this as going from particularly knowledge in that the first level there, the foundation level, uh, with some exercises to enact it during the training, which is an important piece of it with the Scrum Alliance courses. And then advanced is really going into the skills necessary to be effective in a fairly Scrum aligned environment, uh, working with the Scrum team, working in, in a, a pretty localized environment. And then the professional level is taking that to the broader organization. So while she might be embedded with a team as a Scrum Master or, or working on a particular product as a product owner, what does it mean to, to take that to the big picture and really work at organizational improvement and optimizing value across the broader piece in the organization? So um, probably no need to read all of the training topics here, but the, the bits in bold there in the middle are, are descriptors of what the different levels are in the path to CSP. Uh, at least for the Scrum Master pathway. 
And then underneath that, there's some indicative topics that give you a flavor of the sorts of things that we go into. So for example, whilst we have some opportunities to practice a little facilitation on a certified Scrum Master course where we run process miniature and, and have people actually practice a little bit about actually doing Scrum, not just talking about it, but doing it. The advanced certified Scrum Master course goes into specific facilitation skills and practicing of things like professional coaching, structured coaching conversations and coaching dojo, those, those sorts of things. So we're looking to actually equip people with specific skills to be effective in acting this at work. And the CSP level, and I'm hiding the assignments there, um, actually includes five assignments where uh, people are applying this in the workplace, so specific things like uh, team development, uh, organizational interventions, coaching, creating of coaching agreements with people, which I think I often skipped over, mentoring, actually doing that, and, and large scale um, interactions working uh, in the organization, and, and sharing back in presentation form with a cohort. Uh, what's that's what they've learned from that and because there are many skills and this is I think what something that's very underestimated by people that put the scrum master role in the box of a team facilitator which is overly limiting in two dimensions <laughs> one is it's not just developers you're working with it's not just about their performance it's about the product owner the effectiveness of agile product management and it's actually to help stakeholders managers other people that that team interacts with be more understanding and aligned with agile and, and scrum uh, improvement. Um, but also the other dimension is all these stances, right? So we do have not just facilitator, but teacher, mentor, coach, um, managing the integrity of the environment around people, reflective observer to actually raise awareness, make more transparent the situation so that other people can own their own reaction to it. Servant leadership, which is a style of leadership a lot of people just haven't seen in the workplace, I think and being a change agent like not just accepting the status quo but looking to act actively instigate change to improve it so there's a lot in that and the specific skills around all of these things and, and there's actually courses around uh, these these things separately perhaps as well but what's great about the path of csp is it gives the breadth of covering these things and packaged together in a way that's coherent with a scrum based agile adoption uh, maybe just a couple of little uh, anecdotes I was from a New Zealand uh, scrum master agile coach who's done really well with the path to CSP. Let you read those. And perhaps just a little on the, the leadership path. Do I keep it moving? One perhaps final poll for us. Let's have a look at this one. What do your senior managers spend most time on to the extent that you're aware of that. Um, I've just got five categories there. Tactics, strategy, removing impediments, structure, culture. Just curious about what you would see them most involved with. Categorize it into it's similar sort of categories there. And particularly the choice of the first one is probably the main thing to consider. Which one do you put first, maybe second? Okay. Yeah, so this is interesting. The One of the big shifts, I think, for senior managers especially in moving into Agile is to actually level up in terms of the, the leverage that they have by working at, at something that is gen, genuinely a higher leverage thing, capability-based thing, rather than working in the current system of working, innovating the current system of working to make it more Agile. What I'm, I mean by that specifically, well, getting away from tactics and spending time so much on the tactical level and delegating that to teams and getting out of the strategy space quite a lot as well and delegating that to product owners who really own the, the value and, and the, the steering of that uh, and getting much more into cultural change and, and, and structures that actually 
enable and reinforce the right behaviors, the right cultural change, which is much more generative and much more high leverage, I would suggest. A bit like that classic line of culture eats strategy for breakfast. Uh, if you think along those lines, then <clears throat> arguably we need a big shift in, in what senior managers spend their time and energy on. And of course that takes different skills. It takes quite a different mindset and focus to, to be effective at cultural change and, and organizational design uh, than perhaps making decisions about tactics and, and, and strategy. So yeah, what do they need? I think the way I look at it is this a yin yang kind of thing. There's two different key pieces here, the people side and the structural side. Um, and just to break that down a little bit, we've got quite a lot about beliefs and identity and values and behaviors on the left hand side there unwritten rules and norms right the, the way we've always done it a lot of this has to shift and so a leading change on that and then modeling what you want to see of others uh, really requires leaders go first and, and model that themselves by really believing it in themselves and perhaps even uh, changing their beliefs on the right hand side we need different structures um, different decision authorities uh, it's a lot that is, is owned by teams and by people like product owners in, in an agile world. Uh, but, you know, there's lots of interactions in the design of the reward system and the way the organization uh, interacts and plans and, and looks at progress differently, perhaps not just in terms of outputs, but outcomes, impacts, that sort of thing. And to address those different areas, uh, definitely the, the Certified Agile Leadership on the people side is a fantastic program. Uh, there's revelations that people go through with that uh, along the lines of I've realized that for years I've been managing in a way that wasn't aligned to my beliefs and, and my core values. Uh, I've heard that come out of the, the mouths of senior leaders. Uh, on the, the right hand side, uh, looking at more structural sorts of things, definitely covered in the Certified Scrum Professional Program, where Scrum Masters are more equipped to have these conversations with, with senior managers. Uh, and also if you take a, a fairly pure scrum approach to scaling, uh, less large scale scrum is, is one of the options there that is particularly focused and a lot of great knowledge to draw from in making decisions about organizational structures. And yeah, the certified agile leadership, um, there are, is it been split into some modules now? So you can actually do it in, in small chunks of sort of 16 hours with a, the essentials, which is the Cal E and the, the Cal T would be a uh, team. Uh, but Michael Sahodi, you see the upper right there, is one of the most experienced in the world. In fact, he's, I think, done more Cal training than anyone in the world about this. And uh, yeah, it's a, a fantastic uh, program. He has very, very high quality standards. His online training is amazing. And he's got a book now called Leading Beyond Change that uh, yeah, really puts together a lot of principles and, and gives us I think a lot more depth than can be articulated in a, in a couple of days of training. But of course the Cal2 program is the one that a bit like the CSP goes into depth of actually not just the training, but actually applying this in the workplace and, and really playing back to a cohort what you've learned from those experiences. <clears throat> and for me personally, just like I think uh, someone's posting in the, in the Zoom chat there, uh, yeah, Cal it was a hugely enriching experience and, and just something that really made me much more self-aware about my leadership edges and what I needed to work on personally, as well as what this means for, for culture, what this means for organizational change. Do you see an example of the, the setup that Michael has to do his online training, which I think is the highest production values I've seen of any online training personally. So I think, yeah, people, who are a little frustrated by the, the leaders not really getting it, <laughs> just to have the, those sort of people on this sort of training, um, even the entry level Cal E, Cal O, which does go to cultural change and what it means for leadership and things like that uh, would be a, a real breakthrough. So yeah, just upcoming possibilities for that. If you're interested in, in doing something about this uh, sooner rather than later, we have an advanced certified scrum master coming up. This is, uh, as a prerequisite, it does require the Certified Scrum Master for certification, but I welcome people who have not done that yet. Uh, if they've got a little exposure to Scrum and the Scrum Master role, uh, they might do well to accelerate their progress by getting into some of the, the skills training we do on the Advanced Certified Scrum Master. 
and then the more entry level certified scrum master hugely popular course but yeah and, and good for people that aren't just scrum masters we have a, a lot of people who just want to understand good scrum uh, really come on that and get a lot out of it that's been the, the case for uh, since it was since its inception pretty much and certified agile leadership michael sahota's next offering uh is coming up again in the middle of march a lot happening in march and the scrum circle uh we're rebooting that to have a free forum for all of you to speak about your your challenges in in agile adoption at work and by the way i think for a lot of these things you can see advanced certified scrum master isn't just scrum we talk about kanban we talk about extreme programming we talk about lean startup we talk about you know what's working for you and use real world examples from your workplace in coaching dojos in impediment removal structured impediment removal conversations and the same really applies for the scrum circle well, i might have scrum on the tin uh yeah i think we're welcoming all kind of agile methods and flavors into that and it's really what's the right tool for the job for your context so on that note i think i'll say thank you very much um do we have some time for q a Thanks, Rowan. Yeah, look, I think we do. So um, I'll open the floor now to anyone who wants to ask a question or perhaps discuss something. Um, so the floor is yours. If you'd like to get started with just popping something into the Zoom chat, that's another way to start the conversation. Yeah, so hopefully a couple of things we've mentioned have resonated a bit with you. Thanks for that, that comment there. I think for a lot of us, we know what the challenges are, but yeah, actually getting some real breakthroughs with addressing those challenges is what I'm looking to, to help people with generally. And yeah, I do think it can start with in a number of different ways even that that scrum circle thing and having a conversation about what your your challenges are and, and talking to some people that might have been there before or something similar before we can perhaps connect you with what might be some options yeah equip you with something that's a bit more than what you've tried so far i certainly think for the scrum masters anyone who's it's really capability leadership and it's one of these things where we need to demonstrate that if we want others to learn new skills and grow as a team. We need to do that ourselves. Because <laughs> uh, with any style of leadership, you need to be able to demonstrate that you're prepared to do what you're expecting of others. I think it's particularly important for people in that sort of role, scrum masters, agile coaches, to be investing in professional development ongoing. And for their managers and people you know, in their organization to understand that's part of the job. It really is what we're on about here to try to create a learning organization ideally is really the philosophy that a lot of this plays into feel free to pitch in a question kind of expecting a question along the lines of how does this compare with x or y or <laughs> what would you recommend for my situation You're not thinking of anything now maybe the opportunities that's scrum forum we have the scrum circle on the 9th of march i think we're looking to run that online right or about the challenges of getting managers on board yeah uh so for me personally <clears throat> i find it really important to have someone like a agile coach or consultant be able to have the conversations at the right levels in an organization to have managers understand what they want from agile come to some sort of alignment about it's not just aiming to do do agile which is a cool phrasing of it to start with but some sort of business outcome some sort of outcome for your organization capability outcome and when we have that conversation and people say hey it's it's about being more adaptable to all these changes in the world or having better quality products for our stakeholders or whatever 
then we can start to go, well, what does that mean for the people involved and not just other people, but yourself included. And, and that's where I think, you know, the, the need for, for professional development for you know, even quite senior executives and, and things like this can, can really come up in a nice productive way. And if we can offer that to them first <laughs> or early in the piece, then they are in more, a more equipped position to lead the change and, and, and not to be setting up things you know, unwittingly and, and keeping the status quo in, in ways that are going to cause friction and difficulties for others. So yeah, I've had some good success with that, with coaching, consulting clients. Uh, but I think, yeah, it is one of these conversations. And I think it's some of the people at Equinox too can be a part of those sort of conversations where identifying and, and getting some external party in to, to draw out, you know, why do you want this change? What do you want from it? And, and providing a little bit of guidance on what does that mean for the, the people, including yourself. Yeah, come yeah I must say, Ron, um, yeah, having been to many other organizations um, certification and, and having sat some of the certification myself, I was really impressed how um, um, doing Scrum Alliance, it was really a, a community feel and a very, um, it really brought people together who were doing the course. It certainly wasn't a, here's your certi certification, now go out and we won't support you. Um, I think that was not something that I was, I was really impressed by. Yeah, uh, maybe that question, thank you, Paris. Um, it was a good opportunity to, to connect back to what I was, I guess, just saying. Um, quite commonly, and uh, you know, I think we've all been guilty of, of trying to bring to an organization a solution, just do Scrum, just do DevOps, it's great, right? <laughs> And I think where we need to start to, especially to engage managers and leaders in the right way, um, but really everyone is, is why are we doing any sort of change? What do we want from it as our unique organization in our business or in our you know, context with our constituency? And you know, then once we understand what we want as, as more of the, the, the benefits and the payoff, then we can figure out is Scrum the right fit? Is Kanban by method the right fit? Is DevOps the right fit? That does require a bit of expertise, the sort of thing that I and Equinox uh, consultants uh, are involved with. Uh, but um, yeah, just as a quick other angle on that one, I started off not with Scrum, but with extreme programming. And I, I really do believe that that's, again, a really under, under leveraged set of skills and, and way of working that fits beautifully into Scrum, the, the technical practices from that. And what I'd like to see is you know, more of the, the really high well, discipline, technical practices from extreme programming that are to some degree picked up in, in DevOps, but DevOps you know, doesn't always kind of call out some of the behavioral changes quite as much that we need for you know, even true continuous integration, constant refactoring, keeping really high you know, quality, clean code. Uh, a lot of these things are great enablers of DevOps outcomes. And I think that, yeah, anyone doing software development you know, would do themselves uh, well to look at those. So we teach about those in the advanced certified Scrum Master. I've had people who are you know, actually practicing Scrum come along and, and say, I had no idea that all of these practices even existed, uh, let alone that they were interdependent to get the best outcomes. You actually need several of them to be used, you know, having automated tests to enable confident refactoring, et cetera. And I think a lot of that is, is really the, the, the heart of what can result in continuous delivery and a lot of great DevOps outcomes and very much compatible with Scrum, yeah. Any more questions? really appreciate everyone coming along and uh, spending the time with us today. We will have a recording of this available, I believe. Yeah, that's right. We'll make that recording available. And um, thank you, Ron. And just a reminder, as Ron's mentioned, um, we will be having a scrum circle. Um, so we'll have Ron will be there and it'll be an opportunity to get together, um, help each other out, um, hear some challenges other people are facing and perhaps share your own challenges and successes. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's going to be really, um, yeah, a really positive thing and, and a good opportunity just to get together and start creating a bit of a uh, community and I guess really, um, you know, 
you know, COVID has seen us um, working from home a lot and perhaps not uh, interacting so much with peers and, and people. So I think it's a really good opportunity to do so. Yeah, actually, a question I had was, uh, how do people get involved with that scrum circle? There's a, some sort of uh, mail out we'll do perhaps to get one on our mailing list. Yeah, we'll do a mail out um, and obviously people who attended this and also people who are part of our newsletter. Um, and person myself, I'll be uh, putting it on my LinkedIn page and um, yeah. Well, look, if there's no further questions, I think we'll um, conclude the webinar at this point. Thanks, thank you, Ron, and, and thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for coming along.